For Fair Use Week 2022, ARL teamed up with the Social Science Research Council Media Well Project in asking experts to weigh in on how fair use supports research, news, and truth. In this video, ARL General Counsel Jonathan Ban describes how fair use allows researchers and journalists to quote and reference the materials that libraries collect and preserve. Copyright has uh, built in accommodations uh, for the First Amendment, which thereby uh, facilitate uh, uh, journalism as well as research. Um, and and it was uh, Justice uh, Ruth Gator Binsk, Ruth. It was Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg who first formulated that notion of uh, uh, first uh, built-in First Amendment amendment accommodations. And she did that. Uh, there were two cases: first uh, in Eldred versus Ashcroft, and then in uh, she she then used the same language in Golan versus Holder, and you know, the, the, the basic notion is, is that it, it, copyright, if it were interpreted expansively, would prohibit um, ever quoting anything, right? Because if you quoted something, uh, then that would be a, a copyright infringement. So the notion is that you need to have something like fair use that allows you to quote and you need to quote just so that you're not just always paraphrasing someone. If you want to really say, well, he said so-and-so, and this is why it's correct or incorrect, or you want to rely on something for uh, uh, as an authoritative source, you, you often you want to be able to quote the original. And so that quotation is a critical piece of uh, 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 journalism and research. Uh, similarly, you need to have facts and you can't sort of recreate the facts. You can't go out and find the facts originally. You know, you know, there's often no way to come up with historical facts other than looking somewhere where the facts are have been collected. And so uh, the, the Supreme Court in Feist versus Rural Telephone said, no, facts are in the public domain. People can't own facts. And even if it takes a lot of effort to sort of collect the facts, you still can't own those facts. Those facts uh, belong uh, to everyone. And so, um, uh, uh, and, and that too is seen as one of these built-in accommodations uh, to the First Amendment. So, so both, uh, you know, do limiting doctrines of like the fair use, like, like uh, the, the, the uh, idea expression dichotomy, fact expression dichotomy, that these things can't get protection at all, or fair use, which says, yes, the, the, the work has protection, but you're still allowed to use this expression because in, in certain circumstances, it's essential to be able to actually quote the actual language, that that too is, uh, is permissible. So again, the notion is, is that, that uh, copyright um, uh, has these uh, uh, built-in accommodations to the First Amendment. And so while, while it seems that they operate in tension with one another, they actually uh, work together uh, uh, in, in a way that we can see by having the robust journalism and the robust research we have in this country, all that is because these doctrines, these 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 basically constitutional principles of copyright on the one hand, and the First Amendment on the other hand, they're not in tension because they have these built-in accommodations. Nice. Um, do you want to speak to the role of libraries too? Um, kind of. Ah, like sure. Okay. Um, now, libraries are critical in this uh, in this structure because libraries have the materials that researchers and journalists can look to both for facts as well as the expression that they want to quote. Uh, it's the libraries that, that make all the, that preserve those materials, uh, collect them and make them available for the researchers and the journalists. So um, uh, th there is this uh, ecosystem uh, of which uh, journalists, researchers and libraries are all a part.